Vår västerländska påverkan har skapat förvirring. Många förlorar tron på sitt ärvda beteendemönster. Har vi något annat att erbjuda? Ja, detta dilemma gäller inte bara Liberia utan praktiskt taget hela Afrika. I remember when I was a child I lived with an old aunt and she used to take me on Sundays after Sunday school to visit the prisons and she would walk me through the cells and she would cry on me and say, Chalabi, you see what would happen to you if you stole? You see what would happen to you if you stole? And I saw big chains on the legs of some of the prisoners. And she would move from there, walk me into the uh, hardened criminal section where there were murderers, and said, Chalabi, you see what would happen to you if you kill? And Besides that, in those days when you stole, whether you were a big man's child or not, you were punished. You are now looking at them as they are being tied to the poles shortly before execution on Tuesday, April 22, 1980. Are the main to be executed, former officials of the Tobot government. These people, we get rid of them because uh, they have kept our country down for so long time and we feel that uh, if we keep these people alive, it will be a threat to the nation. And uh, we want to wipe out corruption and so we are not going to forgive them and uh, we have to execute them and I'm happy that the execution is going on now. The young men who came to power by the barrel of the gun felt that all the men had lived their usefulness. They wanted a new Liberia. They wanted big cars. They wanted to live a life of high standard. But they had no background. They had to steal to uh, establish a good economic background forgetting that many of us had a great inheritance. I didn't like this to do because our family, my personal family, were victims of some of his atrocities. But when I saw the video of his final days, I was sympathy because it should not have been I am Robert B. Jackson, a former employee of Lamco JV Operating Company, Liberia. I worked with the company from 1962 up to 1966 when the strike took place. Were you one of the, the people who, who started the strike? Who started a strike? Yes. Did you do any go around to tell people to not no. go to work? No. The very day the, the, the strike took place, I, I didn't know because I heard that they had a meeting. In the morning, some friends of mine are living together in the same area. We're just on our way going, coming to work, and then they stop a race to, to the bridge. There was no one to go to work. Torsdagen den 21 juli i år. Egentligen en vanlig arbetsdag. Men soldater posterar den här dagen vid alla arbetsplatser. Arbetet ligger nere. Liberianerna i Nimba har gått i strejk. 
ledningen inom fackföreningen har betett sig på ett som vi tycker helt oansvarigt och illegalt sätt. Det finns en fackföreningslag och en, en lag som bestämmer spelreglerna mellan, <coughs> mellan arbetsgivare och arbetstagare och den har helt brutits. Måndag förmiddag anländer starkt försenad militär förstärkning från Monrovia. En bataljon på över 300 man samlas utanför tjänstemannamässen. Efter uppställning laddas med skarp ammunition. På terrassen bakom väntar de båda arresterade fackföreningsledarna på transport till fängelset. Well, we do not know because uh, they didn't tell us, but I believe they may because if a man refused to move from the house, they will force him from there. But as for me, I will not refuse. En vecka har gått sedan strejken bröt ut. Idag måste avgörandet komma. Klockan sju på morgonen är det hela klart. Arbetarna har gått tillbaka. Återstår för Lamko att utmäta straffet. 30 uppsägningsbrev ska delas ut. Mottagare är de liberianska arbetare som redan stämplats som troublemakers eller uppviglare. And put everything on the truck with my boys. I don't want to go for wanted to go across from this place here. Then I will re-employ through my Swedish friends. Then I worked there from there to 1978. I went home because of certain condition. I'm now in Danane, Petty Danane. Côte d'Ivoire. I'm here against my will because of war in Liberia. That's how I'm here. I'm suffering. We, everybody, all the refugees are suffering. Not my one. All the refugees are suffering. The only thing we do sometimes for us to survive, we go in the bush, we break wood. Before you break wood, if you are lucky, you are not caught there, to be careful to police station, then you, are, you can bring your wood in town and sell it and pay the renters. What? Now some of us are living here, majority of us. Who's up? Who's up? Who's up? And people have come here, and it has looked like, when I see you, it looked like I'm back to Lamco. Right now, when I'm standing talking with people, I'm just like I'm in Lamco, Liberia. I'm happy. I have forgotten about all my problems here now since I've seen you people. Take my teeth here. Look in the bed. I'm going to put it in the shoulder. I left Liberia. It was on a Wednesday. I left because the tension was too high. The war was too high. And for that day, when I came before I closed the bridge, I took Sam. From the from Liberia ground, from Liberia so I put it to, to Africa. When I got here, I said, God, thank you. I'm free. Nous avons, au plus haut de la crise, accueilli 126 000 réfugiés. À Danandeville. Il y a 44 000 réfugiés et les Ivoiriens sont 39 000. Donc, il y a plus de réfugiés que d'Ivoiriens. Mais nous cohabitons. C'est les mêmes groupes ethniques. Il fallait accepter que les réfugiés s'intègrent dans les villes, dans les villages, dans les familles et sans que nous ayons à les mettre dans des camps avec des surveillances et tout ça. Il faut humaniser la situation des réfugiés. Donc, il ne faut pas de temps. Le président de cette communauté, le gouvernement de ce pays, essaie de chercher nos intérêts. Mais les citoyens, je ne fais pas notre intérêt. Si quelqu'un vient à nous, ils vont nous tuer. Je le dis. Ils ne cherchent pas nos intérêts.